Miller's Crossing is a 1990s gangster film produced by the Coen brothers. It's basically about two rival gangster bosses going against each other, but also getting played by the main character, Tom, on both sides. Tom is the right-hand man of Irish boss Leo, who basically, he's a political and gangster boss that runs a made-up city. They never really tell the city name, so it's just some random city in 1920s America. Leo's rival Italian gangster Johnny Casper graciously comes to him and asks him politely, can I kill Bernie Birnbaum? Why we gotta go to this question of character to determine just who exactly is chiseling in on my fix. And that's how we know that it's Bernie Birnbaum, the schmata kid. Cause ethically, he's kind of shaky. Against Tom's advice, he denies Johnny Casper because Leo is actually smashing Bernie's sister, Verna Birnbaum. What's even crazier is Tom, Leo's right-hand man, is also smashing Verna. So it's pretty obvious Verna got that. She got that WAP. She got that WAP, man. Tom tries to convince Leo that Verna is no good and Bernie isn't worth saving. It's just gonna cause trouble between him and Johnny Casper. But Leo's an older guy and Verna got that WAP, so you know what it is. He's going, he's going with the WAP. He's gonna start a war, whatever. Johnny Casper is pissed off at Leo at this point, so what he decides to do is send a hit squad at Leo in probably one of the dopest scenes I've seen in a movie like this man Leo he he grabs the pistol shoots the first guy that comes through the door bang right in the head grabs his Tommy gun hops out the window then shoots the other guy with the Tommy gun <laughs> And in their car, the getaway car is trying to get away. He shoots the getaway car up. And then he hits the cigar raid after that. So after the attempt on Leo's life, Tom comes to Leo and comes clean. He tells him, I've been smashing Verna. That WAP is good, I agree with you. Leo proceeds to beat the shit out of Tom. He basically turns his back on both Verna and Tom at this point. So Tom goes to Johnny Casper looking for work. Johnny Casper obviously obliges, but obviously he has to go kill Bernie. So they go out to Miller's Crossing. Bernie begs Tom, please look in your heart. Please look in your heart. Oh, look in your heart. I can't die. I can't die. I need the wood. Like a dumb animal. In the woods like a dumb animal. Like a like a like a dumb animal. I can't die. I can't die. I can't die out here in the woods. Like a dumb animal. I can't die. And Tom, for whatever reason, decides not to kill Bernie. Instead, he tells Bernie to leave town and never come back. Now Casper's the big dog in the city, and he's using the police to mess up Leo's businesses. So Tom begins to start mess between the Dane and Johnny Casper. The Dane is Johnny Casper's top shooter. He's the head honcho. He's the one taking people out. The Dane finds out that the guys that took Tom out to kill Bernie didn't actually see him kill Bernie. They just heard the gunshot. You are so goddamn smart. Except you ain't. I get you, smart guy. I know what you are. Straight as a corkscrew. Mr. Inside Outski like some goddamn Bolshevik picking up his orders from Yeg Central. You think you're so goddamn smart, you join up Johnny Casper, you bump Bernie Birnbaum. Up is down, black is white. Well, I think you're half smart. I think you were straight with your frail. I think you were queer with Johnny Casper, and I think you'd sooner join a ladies' league than gun a guy down. So the Dane takes Tom back out there to Miller's Crossing to see if there's actually a fresh stiff out there. Tom's out there walking through Miller's Crossing just like he had Bernie. And unlike Bernie, he's not begging for his life, crying and stuff, but he 
did start to crack a little bit under pressure. But right before the Dane was going to shoot him, they found a body out there. But Tom didn't even know whose body it really was. Unbeknownst to him, it was actually Mink's body. And Mink is the Dane's secret quote-unquote lover. I don't get it, Mike. Well, what's to get it? It's as plain as a nose on your face. I thought you were any Dane's sick of it. Yeah, Tom, that's right, but a guy could have more than one friend, can he? I mean, not that I want the Dane to know about it, but a square G like the Shimano, he's the right guy, Tom. He's a square shooter. I know he's got a mixed reputation, but for a sheen, he's got a lot of good qualities. What's going on between you and Bernie? Nothing, Tom. We're just friends, you know, amigos. Yeah, fickle boy, Mink. Bernie actually figured that they would come looking for his body, so he killed Mink, and now he's using that as blackmail over Tom. He wants Tom to kill Johnny Casper now. So now that Johnny Casper is convinced that Bernie is dead, Tom uses Mink's disappearance to convince Johnny Casper that the Dane crossed him. Johnny Casper invites Tom to a meeting where the Dane is there also, and the Dane is convinced that that was Mink out there but Tom told Casper that Mink is gonna meet him up later so Johnny Casper got pissed off and he beat the Dane in the face with a fireplace tool it was it was crazy and after he beat him in the face he proceeded to put one in his head so Tom sets up a meeting with Bernie but Bernie doesn't know that Tom isn't gonna be there instead he sends Johnny Casper but Johnny Casper thinks Mink is gonna be there so of course Bernie gets there early he gets the drop on Johnny Casper and he shoots him in the face Tom shows up and he's really happy that the back door worked and he sees Johnny Casper there so he tricks Bernie and to giving up his gun. Bernie gives up his gun and he thinks that they're gonna blame the whole thing on the Dane. But then Tom is like, yeah, yeah, the Dane is already dead. We can't, we can't really blame it on him. And then he pretty much looks at him like, you know, you gotta, I'ma have to bump you, my guy. It's time to, it's time to die. Don't cry about it. And of course, Bernie starts squirting a few tears, gets on his knees, starts praising and praying to Jesus. He's asking Tom to look in his heart. And Tom just, he asks him what heart and shoots him right in the head. With Bernie, the Dane, and Johnny Casper all six feet, Leo is back to being the top boss in this unknown 1920 city. So we're at Bernie's funeral. Tom shows up. He sees Leo there with Verna. He says hi to Verna. She she walks away from him. She doesn't want to really talk to him after Bernie's death. And they have a talk. And basically, Leo begs Tom to come back and work for him. But I believe with everything that happened, Tom decided that he just wants to go off on his own and maybe find somewhere else to to be a gangster at. So he he breaks up with Leo, essentially. Their relationship is over. And the movie ends there. Miller's Crossing is one of my favorite movies, whether it's the style or the slang or even the music. Everything just hits. The dialogue, everything just, just hits in this movie. It's a slow burn. I know when it came out, it didn't really do too well at the box office. But if you're in the gangster movies, if you're in the period pieces, if if you like hearing different slang and like seeing really cool wardrobe, this is this is a great movie. I highly suggest you go watch Miller's Crossing. This is HB2N signing.